Okay, well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to um, another one of our webinars from the Red, from Red Gates Database Lifecycle Management Series. So uh, each month we uh, basically showcase how the Red Gate DLM tools integrate with different uh, source control systems or build or deployment automation tools. Um, last month, Steve Jones ran um, a webinar on DLM with Git, Team City, and Octopus Deploy. So if you guys are interested, uh, you can find a recording of that, that webinar or any of our other webinars. Uh, on the Red Gate Videos channel, uh, channel from YouTube. So today we'll be focusing on the integration of our tools um, with the Microsoft TFS stack. So uh, we'll be using TFS 2015 as our source control and build system and release management 2015 to manage our deployment. My name is Arne Iskandari. I've been with Red Gate for uh, about five years uh, as a technical sales engineer. So as part of my role, I've helped a good number of our Red Gate customers implement a uh, you know, continuous delivery process uh, for their databases using our DLM solution. So here's my contact information. Uh, if you, um, you know, feel free to get in touch if you guys have any questions. So Steve Jones uh, is also here with us today. Uh, it's great to have you here, Steve. Thank you, thank you. Sorry, everybody, I'm uh, just landed in San Francisco, so it's a little noisy. I'll, uh, I'll probably be on mute most of the time. But uh, let's go, Arnie. Let's show him. Sounds good. Yeah, Steve is on his way to uh, the Microsoft Build Conference in San Francisco. So have fun, Steve. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So, um, so yeah. So uh, we're uh, to start. Off, we're going to run through um, you know a couple of slides just to put some context around what we're going to uh, cover today as part of the demo, and then we'll jump right into the demo afterwards. So. Uh, a couple of housekeeping items. So everyone will be on mute uh, to begin with, but uh, please do uh, post your questions using the GoToWebinar panel, uh, and we'll try our best to answer as many of them as we can um, at the end of our, our session today. All right, so uh, just a couple of, um, so a quick intro to uh, Redgate. Uh, so for those of you who aren't familiar with the company or never used our tool, so, um, Redgate, you know, uh, we've been uh, has been in business for about 16 years, and um, we are a software company specializing in tools for uh, database uh, professionals, specifically developers and DBAs. So we have over you know um, hundreds of thousands of customers from 91% of Fortune 100 companies already using our tools. And our philosophy is pretty simple. So designing highly usable and reliable tools for um, to solve the database problems commonly faced by uh, developers and DPAs. Uh, Redgate is also pretty big on supporting the commun community. So you know we have the SQL Server Central uh, website, uh, which is basically uh, founded by Steve Jones, and uh, a lot of you guys know Steve from there too. Uh, we also do support a lot of uh, community events, and you know Steve. Um, does speak a lot of those community events, such as SQL Saturdays and so on. All right, so uh, let's talk about uh, what we're going to uh, cover today. So, so a lot of dev shops are already utilizing you know, best practices around continuous integration and rapid delivery of their application code as part of their application lifecycle management. But the databases are normally left out because you know, delivering a database change is not as easy as just swapping old code. Uh, with a new one. Uh, databases carry state and business critical business data that needs to be safely uh, and correctly uh, preserved. So as a result of that, um, you know, um, because of these unique challenges with database development and deployment, we find that a lot of dev shops uh, out there who work with databases experience some of these issues that you see in this list here to some extent. Um, because a lot of work around databases still is manual. Uh, you know, um, you sort of come across some of these issues um, when working with databases. I talk to a lot of customers who complain about the database delivery being slow. And, you know, part of that is because, uh, you know, we need to make sure that we are executing the right changes uh, on the databases going into production. And uh, in order to do that, we need to make sure that we have all the right changes from all developers uh, bundled up into a script in the right order uh, before we can get this out to uh, our live environment or production. So, um, yeah. So, uh, as part of our offering, um, you know, DLM basically follows the same principles of uh, application lifecycle management. So, 
This means uh, building repeatability into your delivery process when you are continuously uh, testing and uh, testing the production readiness of the changes that you apply to your databases. Uh, faster speed of response, you know, doesn't necessarily mean that you need to deploy to production every day, but you need to have a feedback mechanism in place. So if a change breaks something on your database, uh, those are caught early in the process and fixed before you go live to production. Um, automation obviously plays a big role in this process. Um, now, most database professionals, uh, you know, especially DBAs, freak out when they hear the word automation because, uh, you know, they just assume that this is this process is going to take over the control of their database deployments uh, going into production. Well, uh, the good news here is that even with the automation process, you can have the right tests and the review steps in place to make sure that you are deploying the, uh, the correct changes to your uh, higher environments. So um, this actually the support from uh, State of DevOps nicely summarizes what we are going to uh, talk about today. So IT shops who utilize best practices uh, around continuous del delivery, deploy code more frequently and with more confidence. And you know that enables them to be more agile in their software delivery process and uh, that makes the company uh, twice as likely to exceed their profit profitability. So we here at Redgate, we, we are going to help you uh, sort of have a uh, you know a nice DevOps process on the on the database side side of your um, you know your application. All right, so how can Redgate help? Um, so here I have this diagram that nicely represents you know the uh, database lifecycle management going from development all the way into uh, um, you know operations um, and into into production. So uh, this whole process obviously starts from you know development and source control is actually a fundamental piece of a, a truly continuous integration and continuous delivery process. So um, we need to make sure that source control is indeed our single source of truth. So uh, in this diagram on the left, you can see on the left here, you can see we have our developers uh, making changes um, to the databases. And we provide a set of tools that are SSNS plugins that enable you to check in your um, changes into source control um, that uh, you know you make on your databases in the development environment. So um, as I said, source control needs to be the single source of truth. And uh, what we do as part of that is we store the state of your database in source control. So every time you modify an object, we store the create script for those objects and update the create scripts for those objects in source control. So that way you can have the state of your database in source control as opposed to having the script that take your database from one state to another. So once your database uh, changes are in source control, then you can have a continuous integration process using uh, whatever build system that you might be using. Um, so uh, here today we'll be focusing on TFS 2015, as I said. So uh, we provide a set of plugins uh, for your automated process uh, that can you can utilize to um, define the build steps for your databases. So, and uh, once uh, you've gone through the continuous integration process, you validate the build. Make sure that your data, the database version that you have in source control uh, has all you know valid objects, no SQL Server syntax or compilation error. And once the build is successful, we go ahead and package up your database from source control into a new package, uh, which then becomes the lockdown version of your database that you can use to deploy to your higher environments. And uh, once the artifact is prepared and ready to go, we can then um, sort of use the release management tool um, such as uh, TFS release management to manage our deployments to our higher environments. So again, we provide a set of PowerShell commandlets that utilize the engine of our compare tool in the background uh, to, uh, to basically help us promote the databases as part of that uh, same delivery pipeline to our higher environments. So uh, this is what we're going to cover as part of our demo today. Uh, but before we get started, uh, I'd just like to run a quick poll to uh, see you know, whether or not you guys use any uh, ready tools uh, already as part of your database development or delivery process. So and Arnie, find out. Yeah, Go people ahead. will respond now, but just to make sure, you know, we integrate with all kinds of other tools, right? From Microsoft or Atlassian or anybody else, right? 
Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we we do these monthly webinars. Every month we focus on different set of tools so that we can see how uh, easy uh, it is to integrate our tools into whatever infrastructure it is that you might be using. So yeah. So yeah, so we normally find that a lot of people are familiar with our SQL compare tool, so I'm curious to see if that um, you know applies to our audience today as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and Yeah, let's close that and get yep, started with the right. demo. Okay. All right, now let's get started with the uh, with the demo here. So let me bring up my VM here. OK, great. So we're going to walk through that same uh, basic workflow that we just des described as part of the diagram. So I'll start off with um, making some changes to my dev uh, database in my dev environment, get those changes into source control, run a build and automated test on the database to make sure that everything is good. Hey, and then we'll, hey Arnie, uh, Arnie, we still see the poll results. We need to close the poll. Oh, sorry about that. There we go. There we go. Okay, great. So the database that I'll be working with today is the SQL Server Central database here. This is actually um, a copy of the database that is behind uh, SQL Server Central website. Um, you know, the first thing you notice here is my database icon is green. Um, this is an in indicator of the database being linked to source control through our SQL source control plugin. So here in the middle pane, you can see um, you know, the UI for our SQL source control. Again, this is just a plugin to Management Studio that creates a bridge between your source control system and your development database. So our database is already linked to source control. I've linked my database to TFS. So if I go to my setup tab here, you can see um, the TFS server that I'm linked to and the folder in which my database changes are um, uh, stored. So uh, when you link your database to source control the first time, SQL source control goes ahead and creates um, the folder structure that is recognized by our uh, compare tool. So if I go into my folder where my database is linked to, uh, this is the folder structure that we uh, use to store your database changes. Uh, in source control. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start making a couple of changes on my database. So um, let's go ahead and make a schema change to uh, one of our store procedures. So I'm going to go ahead and modify this store procedure here. Um, I'll be select start from is that practice. I'm going to go ahead and replace that with um, a set of columns uh, from my table. So here I'm using SQL prompt for those of you who are not familiar with the tool. It's one of our productivity tools and one of our popular tools um, amongst uh, SQL Server developers. All right, make sure that's nicely formatted. And I'm going to go ahead and make this change. Now, as part of SQL source control, uh, you can also source control any changes that you make to the data in your uh, lookup tables or your reference tables. So. Um, to do that, you can just simply go to your database um, and go to other SQL source control tasks. And here you can see you have an option to unlink, link or unlink static data. So you just simply pick the tables that are considered as lookup tables. And so here I have two country codes and RSS feeds um, that I'm source controlling in terms of data. The schema for all tables is source controlled by default, but the data you need to select um, and uh, specify which tables you would like to source control. So I'm going to go ahead and make a change uh, to a data change to one of those tables as well. Here in the object explorer, you need notice we uh, now see these blue blobs next to this object. This is basically a visual indicator of uh, objects that are now different from source control. So these are objects that you need to check into source control. So I'm going to go ahead and make that data change as well, uh, and then I'll try to commit my changes uh, into into TFS from there. Okay, so I'm going to call this um, webinar audience. So one of the interesting things, Arnie, there is you didn't save that store procedure code, right? You just executed it. 
Yeah, so I've basically executed a store procedure um, change uh, on my development database, uh, but I haven't committed it to source control yet. Is, is that what you were um, pointing to, today, uh, Steve? Well, just that you know, you didn't actually have to save that code anywhere, right? You just exactly, compiled it on yeah. the server. Yeah, you know that obviously takes another manual step away uh, from you having to manually store, save your scripts up, and maybe check them into a folder, into a source control, or uh, put them in a sh on a shared drive or somewhere where you know a DBA or someone else can pick them up and execute them in the correct order. All right. So uh, went ahead and made a couple of changes here. Um, simply right-click on my database, go to Commit Changes to Source Control. Uh, SQL Source Control will uh, show us what changes we have made that we need to commit to Source Control. So the first one here is the store procedure change that we made. So at the bottom, uh, you can see the difference in the object definition going from our development database on the left side to what we have in Source Control on the right side. So uh, for those of you who are familiar with SQL Compare, you can see that this is very uh, similar to uh, what you see in Compares as far as the comparison. Um, you also can see we have a um, we have our data change here. So we store data as insert scripts in Source Control, and then when it comes to deployments, we run the comparison between these insert scripts and the data in the target table, and we store schema as create script, um, and we run comparisons on schema uh, to generate the actual update script when we go to our hiring environment. So um, another, a couple of things uh, that I also like to point out here is, um, so here you can see I'm working on a shared development database. Now, um, what that means is you have multiple developers making changes to the same database um, in the development environment. Um, the good thing with SQL Source Control is that it actually can um, keep keeps track of who made what change to the database. So when you're going to commit your changes, although it shows everyone changes, uh, but you can, it only has your changes selected by default. So I'm basically logged in as the Redgate user here. So you can see uh, which one of these are my changes. The data is, is also my change, but um, we don't keep track of the, uh, the user who makes the data changes. So uh, at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and commit my change uh, to source control. So I'm going to go ahead and write my comment here. Get contacts and added a new RSS feed. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and commit this to source control. Um, I'm going to quickly run another poll uh, just to get an idea of uh, you know what source control system you guys are using or are looking to use. Um, okay, this is specifically for TFS, so um, I'd expect most people to, to be using TFS, but uh, let's just go ahead and see what that looks like. Normally we find that major, most uh, development shops either use TFS or Git um, as part of their source control system. So, um, Arnie, somebody asked about, uh, does this use any other disk space when they're, you know, when you're making these changes and um, does it tracking, how's it tracking versions? Can you just talk about that just a minute? So uh, tracking versions of the changes that we make to, to the yeah, database Yeah, the changes we make to code, just so it's clear for everybody. Yeah, sure. Um, so basically, the uh, once you commit your changes into source control, obviously that creates a new, like if you're using TFS, that creates a new change set in TFS and updates the right files. Um, if I right click on my database here and go to view history. Um, Oops. Here you can uh, cl cl close the poll. There we go. All right. Yeah, so about 80% of uh, you guys are um, basically are either using TFS or looking into using TFS, which is great. That just means we have the right audience here. <laughs> All right. So, um, so yeah, so here is basically the um, history of changes that we made to the, 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 the development database here. So this information is being pulled from TFS. So the revision number here is basically my chain set numbers. You can see the date, which user made the change, the comments, what objects were uh, affected as part of that check-in, and how at the bottom here. 
So we also nicely integrate our compare tools into this. So um, you know, rolling back and traceability is obviously one uh, big thing as part of this offering here. So if you want to roll back any changes for any reason from source control, you can just simply launch our SQL compare tool and run a comparison between any of the change sets from source control to your development database and then roll back your changes that way. Um, so that's basically the productivity aspect of our SQL compare tools. Um, that is integrated into this process. OK, so um, I went ahead and committed my change into source control. Um, now that went ahead and triggered a build in TFS for me. So if I just go ahead and update my builds here, you can see that build number 10096 just completed two minutes ago. So um, we're basically using. Uh, the build functionality that comes as part of PFS using uh, a set of command uh, commandlets and uh, Windows batch commands that come as part of our DLM tools to define the build steps. So if I go to my build here in TFS, so for those of you who are um, using older versions of TFS, such as TFS 2013, uh, you know, they mainly use uh, XAML templates to define the build step. So it's slightly different from how um, you know the new build in TFS 2015 works, but we do support both uh, of those uh, versions of TFS with our tools. So here you can see our build succeeded. Uh, just to quickly go over, um, you know, done here. So if I go to my TFS drop location where all the build artifacts are stored, uh, the result of this build is, as I said, is a NuGet package. So here you can see we have our NuGet package here. This is basically uh, all the files that we had in source control packaged up into uh, a NuGet package, which again is basically considered as the lockdown version of our database. So you can see it's the same folder structure as we had in source control. And if I go into any of these folders, you can see uh, the create scripts for our objects in the NuGet package. So. Um, as part of this process, we also um, basically went ahead and uh, ran a set of tests on our on our database. So um, we have a tool called SQL Test, uh, which is a plugin to manage in Studio. As part of SQL Test, we utilize two different testing frameworks. One is called SQL Cup, and the other one is called T-SQL T. Both of them are open source testing frameworks that you can just go ahead and use. Um, um, from their download to SQL Cup here, you can see I have a couple of SQL Cup store procedures here. Um, so SQL Cup is a coding standard testing framework, uh, as well as some performance tests. So for example, you can test for fragmented indexes and uh, different types of tests that you can get out of box using SQL Cup on your database. Now, since these are store procedures, that means you can check them into source control, and you can get our automated build process to run those tests automatically for you. And the other framework is T SQL T. So here you can see I have these T SQL T objects here. Uh, T SQL T is a unit testing framework, which uh, enables you to create unit tests for your database objects um, in, um, in, in your database. So here I have one unit test that is testing uh, one of my store procedures called PRC at contact. And what we're doing here is we're basically um, creating a fake table of an existing table, which is DBO contacts populating that table with some test data and executing the um, our store procedure on that table, the PRC at contact, um, to add that data to make sure that it actually adds the correct data. So here we're just testing to make sure that the data has been added, uh, matches the data that we are um, expecting to get added. So obviously, you know, there's a lot of things you can do with T-SQL T. Um, they actually have a really good website, which is tsqlt.org, uh, where you can go ahead and find out more about how the uh, unit the, the framework works, and uh, there's a lot of good start uh, start guides to help you get started with the uh, with T. All right. So um, so our tests um, basically succeeded. The build succeeded. Created our new get package, which is our build artifact. Now we can go ahead and uh, sort of look into the deployment of um, these changes to our higher environments. So. Uh, if I go back to my databases here, um, I have a couple of additional databases uh, on the same server just for the purpose of the demo that represent my higher environments. So we have testing, uh, integration, testing, acceptance, and production. 
So we'll be deploying to these databases as part of our continuous delivery process using Release Management 2015. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch gears here real quick. Um, so this is Release Management 2015. Um, it's part of the TFS you know, stack, uh, which enables you to define and configure your deployments to your higher environments. So as I said, um, we provide a set of PowerShell commandlets that enable you to go in and create your tools and components for your deployments on the database side of things. And you can integrate those steps into, um, into the same project as um, your application code, if you have that already, or have both the application and database as part of the same project. Um, all right. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, trigger a deployment. While I'm doing this, I'm just quickly going to uh, run another poll um, to um, you know see what uh, built. If you guys are using any build systems or release management tools um, already, or if you're looking into using um, one of them. So, and in the meantime, I'll just go ahead and configure this release here. So we're going to go and we're going to deploy all the way to production. But as I said, as part of this release, we have the all the right approval steps and the review steps in place to make sure that we are deploying the right thing to uh, our production environment. So there's a nice integration between release management and uh, TFS build. So here you can see I picked the latest version of my build from TFS, which is the one that we just built. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and release that to uh, my higher environment. So yeah, so it looks like everyone, um, most people, 70% are uh, using TFS Simple, which is great. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hey, close, close the poll, point. Arnie. Close the poll. Hey, and somebody was asking, is this a TFS 2015 update too? Do you know? Uh, good question. I'm actually not sure uh, which version from TFS 2015 this is. Um, our IS team actually did a got this updated for us, but um, I wonder if it's possible to just go into the administration here and, yeah, so it says it's version 14.23.102, but I'm not sure if that um, is update 2 or, or the first version. All right, so let's go ahead and deploy our release here. Get the latest builds. So uh, this is basically going to um, pick the NuGet package from uh, this build and uh, deploy from that NuGet package. So what we do is we basically run a comparison between the NuGet package and our higher environments that we will be deploying to. And that will generate a report of what is being deployed and it can go ahead and also execute the deployment script that is generated uh, through our SQL compare engine. So uh, one thing that um, I forgot to uh, show while this deployment is running is uh, the configuration on the build side of things. So if I go to my build here, just to show you uh, what steps, build steps we've gone through. Uh, so you can see here we're using basically the executable SQL CI EXE from uh, Redgate's DLM solution. Uh, the first one is called uh, SQL CI build. So this is the step that is basically uh, running a comparison uh, between what you have in source control and a temporary empty database. So we try to build a database from scratch just to make sure that we're following the principles of continuous integration. And if the build succeeds uh, without any uh, you know, uh, SQL Server syntax error or completion errors, then it goes ahead and packages up the database into a new package. And here you can see the next step was the test. So um, this step goes ahead and finds the tests that are under the SQL Cup or the T-SQL T um, schema and it runs those tests automatically for us. And then we finally go ahead and uh, send the NuGet package as an artifact to our drop location, or our drop folder. So um, our deployment got started here. So uh, if I go into, um, into the log here, uh, you can see it deployed to our CI environment successfully. 
but now it's waiting for our approval. So, um, so these are the approval steps that you can have in place to make sure that you are actually deploying the right thing uh, to your higher environment. So if I go to my integration database, we should be able to see those changes uh, apply to the integration database um, that we made earlier. So if I go to my store procedures, take a look at this store procedure. Yeah, we can see the change was applied successfully. And if I look at the data in my RSS feed table, uh, you can see that the data that we just added is also there. So it looks like it deployed uh, successfully. So I'm going to go ahead and approve this deployment and go to uh, our next environment. Hey, Arnie, right somebody now. asked, do we have a step-by-step -step guide for how to set up this release management? We do. Uh, we actually have a, a one step-by-step -step guide on our Simple Talk website. So I'd be more than happy to send that around um, you know, after this demo. Um, so yeah, it basically walks through base, uh, setting up our uh, SQL release components uh, within release management and also defining your deployment steps um, going all the way to production, so yeah. Uh, do, you know, um, um, do you know of any other um, guys that we have on this, Steve? Um, that's the one that I mainly use from Simple Talk, but I was just curious. Yeah, I know we've got some you know, individual ones. I wasn't sure if we had a good comprehensive one uh, somewhere, so I've got to look around myself. Somebody else asked, sure. can you show the, the differential scripts, not to create scripts that somebody might use if, say they wanted to apply this manually later on if they if they had a new environment? Totally, yes, yeah. So uh, let me go to um, this folder here. So as part of the release, uh, or as part of our deployment process, um, the nice thing about our uh, about SQL release uh, is that you can actually break down your deployments into two uh, separate steps. You can, uh, the first step would be to create the deployment script and the report of what is being deployed. And then the next step would be the execution of that script. So if you just want to automate the process of generation of that script, but not the execution, then you can totally do that with our uh, solution here. So uh, if I go into this testing uh, folder here, this is a report of uh, what we deployed to the testing environment as part of this release. So if I go to the reports and open up this changes.html file, So uh, this report is broken down into three tabs. Uh, here is a report of what objects or data is being modified as part of this deployment. So um, here is showing us how the definition object is being changed uh, or modified. So this is not the deployment script. This is just showing how the definition of the objects or data is being changed uh, as part of this deployment. And then the next tab here is uh, any warnings. So these are the SQL compare warnings. So if there's a, any changes that might risk um, you know, data or might result into data loss, such as table being dropped or tables being rebuilt, uh, you would see those warnings here. And finally, the deployment script. So here is the deployment script that uh, you know, we executed on the testing environment. So here's the alter for that sort of procedure. And here is the insert for that record. Um, that we just added uh, to our RSS feeds table. So again, you know, another great thing about release management uh, is that you can introduce a manual intervention, intervention step. So um, let me just go ahead and um, review this deployment here and see if we get that going. And then I'll quickly show you uh, what the deployment steps look like. Um, for this release here. So I'm going to go to configure apps, look at my release template here. So here's the deployment sequence for uh, going from you know, our development environment to CI test, acceptance, and production. So you can see here at the bottom, uh, we, we've broken down the deployments into uh, two steps. One is called create database release, which is basically creating the, uh, the deployment script and that report that we just looked at. Um, and then the next one is um, the execution of that script on the target environment. 
Now, as part of release management, you you know we have this manual intervention step that you can actually put in between these two. So when you create a deployment script or a deployment report, you can send a notification to a DBA or whoever the gatekeeper to that environment is to review the deployment before it actually goes through the execution process. So um, you could, you know, either you do follow that process for every single environment, or you could do that for your more important environments, such as your staging or acceptance or your production environments. So now let's go ahead and um, go back to our lead. So uh, we have to do a couple of things differently um, going into our um, you know, acceptance environment. So um, just to show you how customizable this process is, um, so going into our acceptance environment or our staging environment, uh, the first thing we do is that we make sure that our acceptance environment matches uh, our production environment. So uh, we do a database to database comparison here uh, using this deploy from database uh, step from SQL release to make sure that acceptance matches production before we deploy to the acceptance environment. So once that's done, then we go ahead and go through the same steps of creating the database release and then uh, applying the database release to our high environment. Now, obviously, you know, um, the main use uh, reason why we want to make sure acceptance, uh, you know, matches production is that sometimes, you know, uh, for good reasons, uh, you might need to go into production and, you know, make hot fixes or, um, you know, make some um, bug fixes to the production database uh, without, you know, going into development first. So uh, if that happens, then obviously you need to make sure that those changes are captured and are applied back down to your development environment and into source control as soon as possible. So uh, in order to capture those uh, drifts or those changes, we actually have a really good tool, which is a pretty cool tool called uh, the DLM dashboard. So um, just going to quickly go ahead and launch that here. So DLM dashboard uh, is a schema monitoring tool that monitors the schema changes that go into uh, your environment. So here you can see I have multiple projects. If I minimize them, uh, the project that we are working on is the SQL Server Central uh, pipeline here. And you can see I am monitoring the changes that go into my integration environment, my testing environment, acceptance, and production. And there's two types of changes that SQL, uh, that DLM dashboard can detect. One is called an update. So an update is basically a change that, you know, was detected in our lower environment. It's, you know, it's a change that was either done through our build process uh, that has been tested and validated, or it could be a drift. Uh, so which means, you know, a direct change to one of the higher environments that we've never seen in any of the other environments previously. So if I go in and make a change directly to production, uh, that would be considered as a drift. So it would show it as a red instead of as opposed to orange here. The reason why it's showing orange for the changes that I just deployed all the way to production is because these changes came from my build process, and we have a nice integration between our build, our you know CI process and DLM dashboard. So any changes that get applied as part of a successful CI process uh, would be shown as an update because uh, it's assuming that we already, uh, you know, validated those changes uh, and those are safe uh, to be considered as an update. And if you uh, go into review those changes using DLM dashboard, here at the bottom you can see, first of all, uh, what type of changes, uh, you know, have been applied as, as a result of this deployment. And here at the bottom you can see exactly how your objects have changed going from the previous version to the current version on the, on the right side. And um, here at the bottom, you can also see which user um, or which account you know, made these changes. So here you can see we did this through our SQL release component uh, under the red date account. So, uh, and you can see exactly what time and when uh, that deployment uh, occurred. So, uh, so yeah, uh, you can go in and you know, add comments and acknowledge your changes. As you acknowledge your changes, your database will go back to a green state. So I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge all the changes that we just deployed. If you want to review them individually, again, you can go in and see exactly what changes um, are being deployed to each of your environments. Uh, if, your if your environments are at different versions, 
then obviously the changes that get applied to those environments might be different going from one environment to another. So uh, it's important to see basically that report here, as well as the reports that we generate as part of our SQL release um, component. So Arnie, we've got a and, bunch of questions. Uh, if you, whenever you're yeah, so we're almost done uh, with the demo. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap this up here, and um, then we can go ahead and start uh, with the questions. Does that sound okay? Yep, sounds good. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, let's just go back to our releases. Um, you can see our release was successful all the way to production. We were able to see exactly what was deployed by looking at our reports, as well as looking at CLM dashboard. Um, and that's basically at a high level, you know, the workflow going from, you know, development into source control using our SQL source control plugin and, um, you know, going all the way to production uh, through an automated um, build and testing process uh, and a deployment process to our higher environments. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and open up to questions at this point. So um, let's just go ahead and take a look at the questions so, now. I've answered a few, but somebody, so there's a few that I wanted to get out there. Somebody's asking how you might do release management across 80 domains. Sorry, uh, uh, could you repeat the question again? Sure. Uh, how would you do release management across Active Directory domains? Okay, so um, so as long uh, so I would do that uh, would require a, a connection to um, those Active Directory domains. So as part of uh, release management, uh, there are two there are two ways you could uh, set up your uh, deployments. You could either use a um, you know a release management agent to set it up. Um, so one way is to set up an agent on a single server and remotely. Uh, deploy from that agent to your domains if you have, you know, remote connections to, to those target databases. Uh, the other way would be to set up an agent on every single domain and, um, you know, let those agents do the comparison uh, or run the PowerShell commandlet of our SQL release tool to do the comparison between the new packages and, and, the, um, and the target databases. Obviously, that requires a uh, access to you know, the TFS uh, drop location um, where your NuGet packages are stored and also the target databases that you will, you will be deploying to. So that's basically a requirement in order to um, use release management to go to deploy to our environments. Okay, good. Uh, a few people have asked about rollbacks. Mm -hmm. About so, how you might uh, rollback so, release. Yeah. Yeah, so one way to, um, you know, do a rollback on your releases is to uh, utilize the uh, the PowerShell commandlet of SQL release to, uh, before you're doing a deployment, you can switch the direction of the deployment going from the target the, uh, target database to your NuGet package. And the script that gets generated as a result of that could be used as a, a rollback script uh, if needed. So you gener generate the rollback script first by switching the direction of the comparison again, by just creating another, um, you know, component or step in your deployment using our SQL release component. And then once you've done that, then you switch the direction back to going from the NuGet package to the target database, and that generates the deployment script and executes it. So if you need to roll back, you can go back and take that rollback script um, to, to do the rollback. Um, another way to do it is to, you know, run a comparison against NuGet packages from previous re releases against the target database and generate a rollback script that way as well on ad hoc basis. Yep. Uh, here's the one I didn't know and I thought maybe you might know. Is there a way to schedule a release uh, like on off hours? Um, I believe there, uh, there is. I actually have never, uh, I've never tried that uh, through release management, um, but um, I that's actually, um, yeah, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure uh, with release management whether or not it's possible to trigger uh, to do a release. Uh, one thing that you could do as part of, um, you know, TFS builds is that you can schedule, uh, you know, releases through your build process. So you can set up a build step 
which basically goes goes ahead and runs the build on a specific uh, branch or a source control folder in TFS. And if that succeeds, you can just get it to trigger a release from there. And obviously, that can be scheduled through your uh, you know build configuration. But I'm not too sure. Um, I'm not 100% sure about release management and whether or not that can be scheduled. So I'll need to look into that and get back to you guys um, after this demo. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, somebody else asked, how does this interact with migration scripts? Sorry, interactive migration scripts? If you've got migration scripts here, you know, for something complex, you know, like a column yeah. split or, you know, rename or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good question. So um, as part of our um, uh, SQL source control, um, we offer a feature call, uh, called migration script. So if I go to my database here and launch SQL source control, here you can see I have this, this option called migrations. Uh, and migration, here you can basically create a migration script for um, you know, any data migration or any um, schema changes that you make to your database that needs to be handled in a specific way that SQL Compare may not be able to handle properly. So one of those examples is you know, splitting a column uh, into two and handling the data changes as a result of that, or renaming the table, um, or doing any sort of data migrations. Um, those could be handled through this migrations feature. So you can go ahead and add your migration scripts for those schema changes or uh, any data changes um, here as part of migration scripts. And uh, when, when, when it comes to builds and deployments, our SQL Compare can actually recognize those migration scripts. And it will basically go ahead and integrate those migration scripts into, a, uh, into one deployment script that you can review and uh, deploy as part of your uh, release process. So we're currently working on uh, a, a, you know, a better version of migrations, which is currently in beta. Um, and as part of that version, you can do purely data migrations that aren't associated with any schema objects or anything like that as well. So the beta is currently available to download. Um, if you'd uh, be more than happy to send the, the, the link around, the download link around after this demo for those of you who are interested in migrations. OK, that sounds good. What about, uh, you want to talk about multiple branches? If I had multiple branches, how would I release those? Sure, yeah. If, if you're dealing with multiple branches now, uh, you know, you could have branches because you have, you know, um, multiple projects using the same database or uh, different features on, on the same database. So if you're dealing with different branches, uh, best practice with databases is to make sure that you have a database in your dev environment, um, um, in your dev, uh, you know, dev, dev environment that represents each branch. Um, so if I have three branches, uh, like let's say you have a branch called feature A, another one feature B, feature C, I would need to make sure that there's a database that represents each of those branches um, in my, uh, you know, dev SQL Server instance. So you would link each of those databases to their corresponding branch. You would make the changes, check those changes into the branch. And uh, when it comes to merging those changes into a release branch or a main branch, then you would do that through your source control uh, system. Um, so you could have a process where whenever you merge a change into your main branch, that would use our SQL CI to run a build to make sure that everything you merge actually you know, builds successfully. And if that gets uh, built successfully, then you can uh, have an automated process to update an actual de database that represents the main branch uh, in your development environment as well. OK, so good. Uh, what about SSIS or SSRS? Yeah, unfortunately, we don't um, support source control for SSIS and SSRS. So um, that would need to be done outside this process. Um, uh, so do you Sorry. actually? Uh, know of any good ways to source control SSIS or SSRS or, you know, what best practices are um, on the BI side? No, I don't have a good way to do that. I mean, I think SSIS typically are just objects stored in the, you know, binaries. Yeah, actually, yeah. Um, SSRS, yeah, I guess, yeah. you know, you could do the RDL, but you may So uh, somebody asked about using this against commercial databases like ERP or CRM databases. Uh, any comments there, Arnie? 
No, I mean it should be pretty much the same as any other databases. Um, so um, yeah, I was. Uh, do, do you do you um, have any other comments on that, uh, Steve? Not, I mean, not really. I mean, you can certainly source control your ERP database uh, and and see what changes they're made. But typically, you know, something like PeopleSoft or Oracle will just send you a, a you know a change script of some sort that they want to make changes to. So I'm not sure I would push it through a release process like this because I don't really have any control over the code. Yeah. Yeah. So somebody says there is release scheduling in a triggers tab in TFS. So, so certainly you could do that. Uh, you know, I know like Bamboo, there there are scheduled builds, scheduled releases you could do there. Um, somebody asked about how about releasing to a non-networked production system, <laughs> which is interesting. Yeah, you, you want to take that one? Uh, well, sure. I mean, I think you know if it's non-networked, I assume you mean it's not connected to the development system. You know, as Arnie showed, we do give you the SQL script as an artifact you could actually pick up and uh, obviously you'd have to manually transfer that some way to the target system but then you could just execute that yourself uh, yeah. you know I assume that you mean you're not automating that build uh, you know yeah like that uh, not really see much else I think uh, I think that's better I think you've done a good job Arnie uh, and thanks a lot for showing us how TFS build and release work Yeah, no problem at all. Um, if, if, if there's no other questions, uh, we can um, go ahead and wrap this up. Um, just gonna uh, make the uh, the contact details available again, real quick here. Um, so. Um, And a couple of links here. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, if you guys have any any questions, um, you know, feel free to reach out. Uh, you know, here at the top we have uh, the links to our DLM resources, uh, as well as the general email for for DLM at red gatecom If you guys need any help or assistance, uh, here's also my contact details. So, if you guys have any questions as far as implementing our tools or integrating them into uh, into TFS or any other infrastructure. Be more than happy to help you with those questions, and uh, you know, um, help you guys, um, you know, implement our tools within within your environments as well. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining our session today. Hope you guys found this useful. Again, uh, we're running these webinars on monthly basis, so um, you know, keep an eye out for um, um, you know the other webinars that we have. Uh, we are going to schedule for this, for the other months. Uh, a recording of this webinar will also be available um, uh, soon, so we'll send an email around with the link as soon as that is available um, uh, online. Again, thanks everyone, and hope you have a good rest of the day.